Hey, it's Spencer. I'm going to be showing you what we're working on today. Uh, we're working on a little bit of pruning management. Um, so this area behind me here is what we're going to be managing, but I want to first talk about this zone right here. This is our duck pen area. We just managed that a couple days ago. So basically at this point right now, we're kind of just working our way around the yard. Um, so like we got to manage over there. We got to manage right here right now. Um, and so basically we're working our way around the yard right now to manage every zone before we go and push into the rest of the agroforest before we go and set that up. So this is kind of just going to be uh, a compilation of a lot of, not a compilation, but uh, a series of a lot of different beds being worked um, over the next couple of weeks here. And then hopefully by next month we'll be pushing back into the agroforest and we'll be taking down a lot of trees and I'll be showing that whole process. Um, but we got a lot of stuff to do before we get there. Um, so we're just kind of trying to get around and just make sure everything's managed before we go and spend like two months back there. Um, so this area here, uh, it's kind of an older zone. Uh, we've got a bigger Inga right here, ice cream bean climbing on that. We've got, got some black pepper in here. Um, so we're going to be taking that Inga down. Uh, maybe that black pepper will be flowering after that. We've got a cook pine here. Uh, for some reason, this cook pine doesn't want to continue growing up. It's kind of just topped itself. Um, so that's kind of a weird one. So um, we just kind of managed that a little bit. We cut off some branches and stuff. Um, and then we've got here some peppers, some hot peppers. Um, these are a Thai hot pepper, very hot. Um, we were growing these for uh, one of our friends. Uh, she makes Thai food and she makes a super hot sauce with that. Um, so we've got a little row of them here. We need to manage them. They're kind of flopping out and stuff. Um, we got some Vigna climbing on them, so we're going to manage that. And then we've got some uh, Ginger Spectabilis over here. Very pretty, very cool. Um, you know, we'll just be kind of tidying up in here, doing a little weeding. Um, we've got a cut nut in here. This guy here. Um, we got a little bit of tea leaf in there. We got some sunflower getting a little old and floppy. We'll be cutting that down. Um, we've got a dwarf Maui Kawalau here. Um, push around this way so the lighting's a little bit better. Um, we've got a ginger relative here. That one makes a nice big flower. Um, doesn't seem like it's doing anything quite yet. Um, we've got some annatto in here. This one's a really interesting annatto. It's a yellow fruited annatto. <clears throat> so it's kind of a green yellow color rather than that bright red color. The seeds are still normal, nice and bright. Um, we've got some uh, edible hibiscus in there. We've got some tea leaf here. Uh, we can see the annatto poking out there. So this bed here we're gonna be working. Got a couple other things in the understory. We'll check that out later. And then we've got this Moringa here, it's very large, very tall. It's probably, oh, 25 feet tall. So we'll be taking that down. Uh, we've got this passion fruit climbing all over things. We're gonna need to manage that. We've got another banana here. That's a Pudalinga Kula. Uh, we got a duck in here. He's managing in there. And Grimlock. You're a good boy. Um, and then we've got in here, we've got a, a grafted soursop Morada variety. It's supposed to be a big, huge uh, fiberless variety. It had flowered a couple times, but I don't know, it's kind of intense with the Lilikoi on top of it right now, the passion fruit. So we're gonna have to manage that. Um, and then just poke through here, we'll see a couple other things. Um, we've got some arrowroot. And then, yeah, we kind of need to come and tidy this stuff up in here. Got a bunch of passion fruit hanging. But yeah, just a regular management. You know, this one will obviously be cutting back to that same point. With our Moringos, we're treating them as emergent, so they're just kind of up and out of the way. We don't really harvest them that often because they're kind of inaccessible, but um, for their stature, we like them. We like them just up and up and away. We can harvest them if we want, but uh, if you're gonna wanna harvest them, best thing to do is, you know, when you cut it back, then you're gonna come and it'll re be regrowing something like this, where that whole plant is much more manageable. You know, so that would be very easy to just come through, harvest all those leaves out, and then you can process them. Um, you know, if you're gonna dehydrate them, or if you're gonna eat them fresh, or whatever you're gonna be doing. Um, yeah, so that's kind of our 
our effort today will be showing the time lapse and then I will show a video afterward. Just kind of zoom out and see. All right, on to the time lapse. <laughs> I'm back out here in this little zone here. I'm going to show you my process and then I'm going to show you some of the plants. Um, so first thing I did was I came down here and I weeded the ground uh, before I did anything. That was mostly pulling out this plant here, Vigna. Um, pull it out by the roots and then just kind of mulch it back. And then after that I came and I started working in the tallest trees first, which was this Inga here. Uh, so I came and I topped it. Um, took all the vegetation, took all the branches off of it. Um, left a couple little minor ones up there just so it knows to, you know, have some energy and regrow up high. Um, and then next I tipped the branches on this pachira here and I left it kind of going up, but I did kind of tip back the whorls there. And then I tipped every single branch on this cook pine. Um, so that was kind of the main tree management in this zone. Um, the anato I topped cause it was just getting a little tall. Um, so not, nothing too particular with that one. Um, and then after I did that stuff, you know, I came down and kind of monitored what was going down. Um, I kind of managed all these peppers, cut them back really hard. Um, just kind of getting them to stop flopping out. I did have to tie them up a little bit um, with these little strings here. Um, those strings, uh, I'm using it to pull the plant up so that the ducks stop pulling them down. Um, they like to eat the peppers, so they kind of they kind of ravage the plants and kind of keep just pulling them down and kind of just ripping off the peppers. So fine, they want to eat them, but we got to, you know, keep the plants from flopping out and becoming a problem in terms of walking around and stuff like that. Um, and then one other thing I did around the um, cut nut here was I took some branches off of the cook pine um, directly above the cut nut. Um, so that gives the cut nut some space so that it can grow straight up without anything directly above it. Um, so that's just a little minor pruning management technique to give things space. I'm sure it has something around it, but it has so much room to go up that it's going to just be fine doing that. Um, and then our black pepper has um, a little bit of fruit on it. So that's super exciting. We really love black pepper. Uh, fresh black pepper is, it's incredible. It's super spicy. You can, you can see why, um, you know, hot peppers are called, they're both called peppers because, you know, it does have a spice to it, like a heat to it. Super interesting. Um, so hopefully next year that'll be producing well. This year it's kind of just dabbling a little bit and making just that one spike that we found. Um, and then we've got in here, we've got our, our Spectabilis. Um, these flowers are kind of starting to die back, so getting a little ugly, but figured I'd leave them for a minute before they kind of want to go away completely. Banana's now got some more space around it. Nice dark green leaves. Um, and then over here, a little duck party going on. Um, over here, yeah, just kind of minor stuff. Cut back a little bit of the um, edible hibiscus there. And then over here, we cut this moringa back. Um, so this one, I was kind of pondering where I wanted to cut it. And I did cut it above its previous point there just a little bit because um, then it'll make smaller branches up there rather than having a big fat branch coming out of here. Uh, but also what I did was I kept it up a little bit higher there. Um, so you can tell it's near the top of the bed there. If I would have cut it down here, I would have been nervous of it of dying in the shade because it's not going to have the, um, the sun energy to be able to produce out. Um, so our emergence, we got to keep high um, up and above everything. So... 
you know, that's what we did with that one. And then this one's even up a little higher. This one's somewhere around 12 feet. This one's probably somewhere around eight feet. Um, so same type of thing, you know, we want to have lots of room above um, our other trees that are actually our cropping trees that we're caring more about, like the soursop here. Um, so it's got lots of room to be able to go up with nothing right over it. And then when that does resprout, it'll be up there. So it won't be affecting this. Arrow roots looking good down here. We got some passion fruit that we harvested uh, from working this zone. Uh, bananas now got its space it wants here. And then another thing that I did was I was managing this passion fruit. So basically I pulled it all back down to be onto just this one Inca right here. Um, that's also right here. Um, so just pulling it back, you know, it's still got some fruits on it. So I didn't want to completely cut it back hard yet. You know, this one's almost ready. That one will probably be ready in a week or so. Um, so kind of just letting it finish its crop before I come and cut it back hard, you know, and I'll probably just cut it somewhere around here. So, um, and then we got this little durian here that's happy for some sun. It's kind of spindly, not looking super great at the moment. Um, so yeah, bottom looking good though. And then we cut this macaranga back, gave this banana some room. And then, you know, now we've got this lemon bed we need to work. Nice variegated lemons though. Super interesting. Got nice variegated leaves. Even check out this cool one over here. This one's an all white mutation. Super crazy. Um, we'll get into that bed later. Um, anything else over here? Nothing too particular. Um, so yeah, kind of a kind of a straightforward management there. Um, just kind of our normal stratification pruning. Um, kind of putting things back into the layers they want to be in. Um, and giving things the space they need. And also kind of just tipping things to give them that uh, growth hormone. And then we got a ton of mulch on the ground here. Lots of passion fruit. It's super annoying working with the passion fruit, but it does give us um, some income stream, so that's great. Um, got the Inga down here, looking good. Um, so yeah, cook pine in there, lots of mulch. Things looking real nice. Um, yeah, so that's kind of just that management. Uh, so anything else particular? I don't think so. I think just, you know, I kind of did leave these up here because just let it finish its crop. Um, the Anato is actually a really interesting, I guess I'll just share something that I was working on yesterday. Yesterday I was working in my friend's agroforest. Um, <clears throat> it's about 15 years old. Um, and we were just coming through managing the ground and stuff. And I kind of noticed in there that he had a couple of nattos. Um, and he had cut them multiple times down to the ground already. And they were like, you know, big fat trunks, you know, like, um, I don't know, bigger than these trees even. Um, so yeah, the annatto it was really interesting. I was watching the way that it was growing back really nicely in heavy shade underneath large trees. Um, so interesting. That could be a really cool biomass plant for your understory. Um, if you got the space to have, you know, bushes around and stuff like that. Super easy to work with. It pops apart really nice. Uh, the chainsaw goes right through it. Uh, you can cut it down to the ground. It regrows. Super cool plant. Super interesting plant. I'm thinking about actually planting more of it. Now that I've worked with it a little bit, uh, learned a little bit about it. Um, so just a little plug for it. I like Yanato and they're really beautiful, kind of fun to work with. Um, you know, just so interesting. And the red one's really beautiful too. Um, so yeah, just kind of a, a random little um, thoughts about that. Uh, so yeah, just regular management coming through, tidying things up. And then we'll be pushing on to another bed and we'll be doing more videos about that stuff. So if you want to see more of our management, uh, hear about, about our techniques and the way that we're kind of managing things, um, feel free to subscribe, uh, leave us some comments, leave us some, uh, some likes. Um, you know, we really do enjoy getting the comments because then we can interact and have some dialogue and, you know, really um, answer people's questions. So if you've got one, please let us know. Um, yeah, it's fun for us to answer those. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.